So there are probably endless reasons why we <laughs> don't share the faith, right? We don't go out and we talk to strangers out there. You probably have a thousand of your own. I've got 10,000 of my own. And um, But one that I want to highlight really is the fear of not knowing what to say or not knowing enough or not being smart enough. So we're sitting there and it's like, you know, I'd like to talk to people about Jesus and, and share my faith, but I don't know what to say. And what if they're smarter than me? What if they ask me a question I don't know how to answer? And we start to kind of build this picture in our mind of this terrible situation gone wrong and it's super awkward and uncomfortable. And that's, that's what stops us because that picture gives us that pit of fear in our stomach. You've had this before where you've been walking around and you get this nudge like, hey, go share with this person. Go encourage them. Go pray with them. But you get that ball of fear and you're like, no, oh, not going to do it. I'm going to give you what I call the three most dangerous questions to ask. And if you get good at these questions, I guarantee that you can control um, your side in any conversation, no matter how heated it gets. And remember, conversations don't have to get heated. In fact, that's not really your goal. Your goal is to kind of stay away from that because fights just don't really help anybody. Anyways, if you get these three questions down, I guarantee you, you're going to notice the quality and the depth and the length and the effectiveness of your conversations are going to skyrocket. So first question is, I also have to kind of condition, these are not my questions, I'm not that smart, but I use them and I got really good at them. So you can use them too and you'll get good at them. First question is, when somebody says something, you're in discussion, you ask, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? So somebody says, well, I believe this, or I don't believe that, or da 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 da. And you say, what do you mean by that? You now open up the opportunity to, for them to kind of explain where they're at. And most often, a lot of people uh, think they know something, but it's only like to that level. So <laughs> if it's, if it's, like, a sh like it's, if it's that deep, you'll find out quick. If it's deeper, again, you'll find out quick. But you can keep asking that question all day long. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Get to the, get to the depth. And if you don't really know how to refute somebody in, say, a challenging question that they bring to you, or maybe they have a belief system that you don't know what they're totally about, like Buddhism or maybe even Islam or Mormonism, and you're like, I don't know anything about these guys, that is a great question to let them educate you. What do you mean by that? What do you believe? Teach me more. And instead of turning it into a, a debate, you can turn it into like, hey, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to learn who this person is and maybe build a relationship because that's fantastic evangelism through relationships. Second question is, how did you come to that conclusion? So now you're going after their source, right? Somebody makes a statement and you say, how did you come to that conclusion? And it comes to like, oh, well, my mother's sister's dog told me. Oh, really? That's a great source, right? Or my professor told me, or my wife told me, or my kid told me, or whatever you want to say. And then you go on to say, well, how do you know they're right? Right? That kind of situation like that. Because just because somebody's got a title or maybe they're well studied in a certain area, doesn't mean they're a professional in every area, right? So this is to keep the grounds equal, right? Second question is, what do you mean by that? Third question is, and there's two variants of it, but you can pick whatever one you want. I'm going to give you the one that I like the most. But the question is, if Christianity were true, would you believe in it? And if the person is honestly seeking truth, they're being integrous with their thought life, and they're like, yeah, you know, I, I'm a fan of truth, whatever it is. I'm not biased. I want to know what truth is. And they'll say, yeah, yeah, I probably would believe in Christianity if it were true. Which then leads you to say, cool, can I get you some information? Can I get you some materials? What do you need to, to have in your hands for, it, for you to be convinced, right? You can take the conversation down that road, but... You'll be surprised to hear that more often than not, when I ask people that question, I've heard a ton of people say, no, I wouldn't believe. I'd still not believe. And it's like, well, it looks like you're not on a journey for truth because, <laughs> right? It's set up in a way where you find out their true motives of why they're kind of arguing with you or why they're contra, 
any belief, really. And you can put that question on anything. If if uh, this were true, would you believe it? Your answer should be yes, regardless of if it's Christianity or not. We should be advocates of truth. We should be searching for truth because truth helps us, doesn't it? Anyways, those are the top three dangerous questions. Uh, I hope you like them. Try them out. What do you think? Comment below. Share this. Uh, I don't know. Do you have any different questions? We'll see what's going on. Brian James out.